Welcome to Stitch Crazy. My name is B. Yodi and I will be your host today. Um, I'm going to explain a few tools that you will need to um, do our sewing project. First of all, um, your sewing machine. And you'll need a scissors, a rotary cutter, and these come in different sizes. Um, this is like a quarter inch tool. The ruler. This is the cutting board on the bottom here which there are different sizes of the cutting boards. Um, here's another square tool that we could use. Of course, you'll need thread, fabric, and then also pins. And I have just a little tip for you for pins so that you don't, um, when you're using pins and you're putting them away, I usually like put a rubber band around them and I put them in a little extra case in case they happen to fall off the table. They won't be like scattered all over the place. So that's just a little extra tip for today on your supplies. So I'm gonna put my supplies over here. And if you have any questions, you know, regarding what supplies you're, what you'll need, if you, um, if you have a magazine or a pattern, it will normally tell you what supplies you are gonna need. Here's a few, magazines that you can buy or here they have like quilters newsletter there's quilting arts and you can even buy dvds that have patterns um, in there for um, making up different projects okay you can find them at any craft store joann's even walmart they have uh, where they sell magazines and so forth so when we have our pattern and i'm going to take this today and we are going to take kind of a project that we used before and I'm going to show you how we'll just cut out two squares of material. So we are going to take our tool here and I am just, this is scraps of material that I want to get rid of. So on your ruler, of course, you'll have like one inch, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is an eight and a half inch rule square. And so today I'm just going to cut out a six and a half inch square. Even though we won't use this for our sample, I'm just going to show you how you cut them out. And you just take and lay out your fabric and then you find like the size that you want to cut it out. So I'm going to cut the one side. And then I'm going to cut the other side to get the first piece off. And if your board is, is um, small enough, you can just rotate your board. Otherwise, you can lift your fabric up and adjust it accordingly. This one here, we're going to find the six and a half inch and line that up with this side of the fabric and this side of the fabric because I've already cut those two sides. Okay, so now I've got my ruler aligned on my fabric, so I will cut the other two sides. Okay, so now we have the two pieces cut. I'm going to put my ruler away, and we will put these two pieces together, right sides together, and this is where you're going to use your quarter inch tool. You want a, the corner to corner. And in this particular one, this square is a little bigger. So I'm going to take my other sample here. So I'm going to lay it on. You're going to have the corner to corner. And this is what you're going to do with this same piece here. We would draw. There's a on the tool. There's a space in the middle where you can draw your line and bo on both sides. So we will want to draw the lines in the middle and on both sides. Okay, we take it over to our sewing machine and we sew. And I've already done that on each side so you can see where there's lines on both sides. You can maybe see here where I I have um, drawn my lines and then I've sewn on each side of the middle line. Okay, so then our next step after we've gotten this sewn and we've got our lines all drawn, 
we are going to cut it down the middle of our piece. We can take our ruler and use our rotary cutter, cut it. You end up with two pieces, the same. Okay, and then what we would do is we would iron or press your seams towards the printed fabric. And there is a little wooden tool that you can buy, but just finger pressing is okay too. Or you can get it to the iron and press it down. Okay, so now once we've made a few of these, <clears throat> I've already made some blocks. And what our main thing here today is to kind of sew our blocks together to make a runner. So I have made three blocks earlier on a different program. And I have these three blocks. And I want to put them together as a runner. So I cut strips of fabric. And this is a two and a half inch strip that I've cut from fabric. And this is called a sashing. A sashing goes in between your blocks. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna take this to my machine. I have a cut longer than what I need, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take this to my machine. line it up here and I'm going to sew, I'm going to do a quarter of an inch seam. And then what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to cut this excess off on this particular one. So I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to move it this way because I'm right-handed. Got my rotary cutter here. So I'm going to cut this excess fabric off. Okay. And then I'm going to press down my seam and then I'm going to go to the next block. I want to join these two together. So then I'm going to take this block and I'm going to sew it to the sashing. So I take this over to my sewing machine once I have it all lined up. Put it in here and sew my line. Again, I'm going to take a quarter of an inch seam. And that's just a personal preference. If you start with the rest of it at a quarter of an inch, you need to do the quarter of an inch here. And the reason for that is if I took more than a quarter of an inch, it would not meet on my corner here. It would take more of it off. So it depends how you start your blocks. If you start with a half an inch, then you should take a half an inch in, on your sashings. the second one sewed and then I would put another one here sew this together and continue till you want to have whatever length you want to do okay I already have one finished here so I will show you what I've done Valley Cellular has a simple shared plan pick any size to fit your needs it's that simple you get three months free access on all lines. Stop in our office or call us today at 437-2615 for more information. On this one, I have already put my sashings on the side, this block, and in between. And this is the length that I want. So then I sewed 
another sashing for the outside. So let me show you how I, if I don't have long enough pieces, which I don't. So I'm gonna, cause I'm using up scraps. So I'm just gonna lay some pieces down here to see how many I would need to sew together to make this work. And you gotta put your seam allowance in there. Okay, so I have four here. So I'm gonna take the right sides together. And I'm gonna sew a fourth inch seam. And I'm gonna sew all four of these together so I make one long strip. because to save time, I'll just take and put these two together. And this is called chain stitching or chain piecing. And it's always nice to have one of these little scissors next to your sewing machine and then you can just quick cut your threads and then you can have your bigger scissors for other things. Okay, now I've got two pieces here to put together, but when we're putting them together, we wanna make sure that we're putting them right sides together so that our seams, if we did it wrong, we'd have a seam showing here and then this is your seam. So we wanna have seams, seam, and then flip it over. And when we sew it, it'll be the same They'll have the seam on the wrong side. So I will sew this third piece together. Okay, so now I have a piece long enough to finish up my, my piece. Okay, so now I'm just gonna kinda test it out here. So I'm gonna put my edge along here and we're just gonna kinda see where our seams go. So if we don't want this seam, this looks like it, it's close to matching this one, but if we don't want it exactly the same, we can always pull it down a little bit so that it offsets it. And then we'll just start this. We don't have to start it at the end. We can start it wherever we feel comfortable. So then I'm gonna sew this long strip to my piecing. And then when you come to the, um, the seams where they gather, go together, you wanna see if you wanna push your seams one way or the other way or open them up. And that's just a personal preference. Now, if you have to, you can always pin this together, but I've done it enough where I just lay my pieces together and sew. And then I usually stop before my seams and kind of adjust them accordingly. to the end of the row. Okay, I'm at the end of the row, so 
I sometimes like to back stitch just to make it a little more secure. You can just do one or two stitches. Okay, so then now what I'm gonna do, I have excess on both sides. So I'm gonna take this, lay it down, put my ruler alongside the edge and use my rotary cutter to cut the excess off. And then I'm gonna do that with this other side. Align my ruler and then cut it again. Sometimes those threads don't always cut. It could be you're not pressing hard enough. You might need a new blade. So there's variable um, reasons why those threads don't cut. And it could be the fabric. Maybe it's just a little more touchy. Okay, so now I've kind of made a runner. And this is how you put your, how you can finish your runner here. It's a sweet deal. Sign up for broadband high speed internet and get an Apple iPad mini for only $50. Plus get free installation. Call Valley today at 437-2615 to take advantage of this sweet deal. Okay, now that we have this piece done, um, we will find a backing to put on um, on the back of this. Now, um, there's different sizes. You know, had you only wanted it this big, you could put a sashing on both sides and on the end. Or if you don't want a sashing on the side, you could just find a backing for this and sew it together and flip it inside and out. And I can do another program sometime on showing exactly how to put these together. So you can make a small one, or this one here is a, is a longer runner. So I have a sample piece of fabric here that I'm gonna, I could use for the backing. And so what I would do is I would lay this out and make sure it's long enough. And here, if you want to put a batting in the middle, you can. And you would take it accordingly and cut it off. And then you would get a binding and finish it. So that would be one way of finishing this wall or this little runner here. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple things that I have made um, from a different projects. On the four patch from the last program, um, here you can make, I've got like started a runner. And I'll show you, I'll take this little square here and then you can see where that little four patch is. And so on this, you could make this any size that you wanted. I'm thinking about continuing this to make it out of a baby blanket. So first I have to make all the four patch blocks and then I have decided that this is how wide or how wide is it gonna be and then I'm gonna make it square so I'm gonna make it the same length. And that can be for another program too. Okay, and what you can do with scraps of fabric, and I did not make this, I am, my sister made it and she gave it to me so I thought I would share it. And these are little blocks this size. And she has a square in the middle and she put little strips of fabric all the way around it. And the reason she made this for me is I'm using it as a memorabilia quilt. And a couple of these pins that are in the middle of the quilt are from my mother's um, estate. So, and these like a bowling memorabilia and she used to collect pins from the state of North Dakota. So that's what these are. You can put anything you want on the blocks or you wouldn't have to put anything on the blocks and it would just be a cute little wall hanging as it is. So I did not make that, but my sister did. And that's all out of scraps of material. 
Now, this one I made, and this is just from a, a pattern, and this has to do with Thanksgiving, but I made a turkey, and this is, you know, made from, you go from the inside and then you work your way out to make this quilt. So I just thought I'd do a few show and tell on different quilts that I've made. So I hope you have enjoyed our show today. If you have any ideas or if you would like to be a host for our show, please call us at 437-2615. Thank you.